Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech, and today we are reviewing the Honor 8 from Huawei. Now, I had been watching this phone for a little while. I was very interested in the dual camera. Um, I was interested in its price because of the specs that it comes packed with. Uh, it just looked like an overall fantastic phone. Um, the early, uh, the early reviews or unboxings and stuff that I saw just it, it just stands apart. I mean, even from the unboxing experience, if you didn't see the unboxing and initial thoughts video that I did, make sure to click on the link um, in the description or the card up above and check that out because it's just it was just cool. I mean, I've unboxed a lot of phones. I I've, I've owned a lot of phones, and this is the first unique phone unboxing experience I've ever had and uh, awesome job Huawei on that. So the Honor 8, I, I purchased this phone. It came with a case, a clear case. It was just kind of a bonus special that was going on. Not a fan of the case. I don't like these kind of, you know, silicone-y clear cases. They're just slimy. Um, but nonetheless, that doesn't have anything to do with the phone. It just is my opinion of one of the few cases that are available for this phone because there just aren't a lot of cases available for phones like this until they've been out for a little while. So the Honor 8 is a feature-packed phone for a small price. Now, I've included links in the description below so that you can check out the price, so that you can see some of the exact specs if you're interested in that. Um, I'm primarily here to talk about my thoughts on the phone after spending a couple weeks with it, and I wanna report that stuff back to you guys. So this phone has a beautiful display. For a budget or a mid-range kind of priced phone, which I guess it's not really a budget phone, it's kind of a middle of the ground phone as far as price goes. Um, at the time I purchased this, it was $399, but it came with a free case and actually a $50 gift card, um, which was cool. So I guess I paid $349 for it. Um, and for the price, you know, I, it was so enticing to me because it's got dual cameras, it has top of the line specs, it has, you know, a lot of storage, it can accept an SD card. I mean, everything just looked great. You know, a lot of people when they initially, you know, in the reviews that I watched on this phone, people would complain about certain things. I have no gripes about this phone. And I have one thing to say to all those reviewers that complained about the exact same thing. And I'll say that in a few minutes. So the build quality of the phone is great. It is a solid phone. It feels great in the hand. If, even if we take this, you know, what were those sandals called? Uh, those gel sandals. This is what this case reminds me of those jellies or whatever they call it. It's just a horrible case. Um, anyway, so this phone is, it's very reminiscent of an iPhone. And I talked about that in my unboxing. If you put this phone up against an iPhone 7, and you have an iPhone 7 and you have this phone, it's very hard to tell the two apart. They are a very similar design and style. Now the, the glass on the front of this is just extremely beautiful. And of course the back, the back glass matches it. Um, it's flush. The cameras are flush as well in today when we have cameras protruding from everything for whatever reason. The cameras are nice and flush. It has a fingerprint reader on the back, which also has a button action, which most camera phones, most phones do not have that. If there's a, a fingerprint scanner on the back, it's just a reader. It doesn't actually have a push button function. Now that push button, what you can actually do is map that to perform functions. Like if you press and hold, it's gonna unlock the phone. And for me, I have it automatically go to Google Now, which is the, uh, a default kind of feature. It would open up Google. And so if I press and hold on this, it actually takes me straight there and, uh, and it saves me a step. And I can map that to other things, which is a really cool feature. Now, um, this phone's with its dual cameras. I was pretty impressed with the camera, considering the fact that when you buy a phone that's not a flagship, and by flagship, I mean a phone that's gonna cost you probably $600 or more, you usually see problems with the camera. Now this camera doesn't have, uh, you know, it, it has some shortcomings, but as far as what it does offer, it's pretty fantastic. I carried this phone with me when I was in New York for a week and spent some time walking around Times Square, taking some pictures, both with the single camera and using the kind of portrait mode, uh, which uses both cameras to take a picture and uh, add some blur to it or make it a shallow depth of field. And it was, it was a pretty fun experience. I mean, it's, it's obvious what it's doing and it's not perfect, which if you've seen what the iPhone 7 is gonna do when portrait mode is introduced, you can tell it's not perfect, but it is a cool feature to have. 
So that dual camera is, is definitely fun. You know, as a photographer, I like taking a picture and having the background kind of blur off a little bit. Um, it definitely makes for a more interesting photo. It's uh, when, when your subject is in focus and the background is in focus, it draws your attention to those things that are in the background. And when the background is blurred out a little bit, it definitely makes your subject pop a lot more. It makes the photo more interesting and it draws your eye to what you wanted the photo's uh, main point to be. And having the dual cameras on these phones, I mean, that's really the only way that they're able to achieve this because they don't have big lenses like on DSLR cameras with lots of glass in them and technology that makes it so that you can get that, that bokeh or that blurry background or those little nice little shapes in the background or whatnot. You just, you can't get that with a smartphone unless you fake it somehow by using two cameras and some software. So that's what this phone essentially does. It uses two cameras and some software to make a photo that is more of a portrait style with a blurry background. And it works with a lot of things, not just people. You know, I took some pictures of some landmarks use the, the kind of portrait mode, which isn't what they're calling it on here, but it's what I'm calling it because Apple called it that, so that's probably what it's gonna be called as all phones start to do the dual camera thing. Um, and it worked pretty well every time that I used it. It doesn't work too well with moving subjects and things, it's easy to confuse it, but if you're taking a picture of a person or a subject or something like that that's holding pretty still, um, it does a really good job. And even the edges around the person or the subject don't have any, you know, kind of weird things going on with it. It does a pretty decent job. I was pretty impressed and ended up taking a lot more photos with this phone than I did even with my iPhone 7 that I had with me. So the battery life on this phone is amazing. For an Android phone, you typically don't get a full day's battery life out of your Android phone if you use a phone like I do. I use my phone a lot throughout the day. I'm always on it here and there making calls, text messaging, taking photos, video, using social media apps. I'm always doing a lot of stuff on my phone and even some of the bigger phones don't last a whole day for me. However, the way that, uh, that Huawei has used their, um, their UI and their experience in here, it, it tells you when an application is using a lot of memory uh, or a lot of battery power so that it can be shut down. It has battery saver features that are built in. It's actually pretty smart. Now, one of the things that most other reviewers said is that their, um, their UI, their launcher that they run on this phone is very heavy. And that is true in the sense that it does change a lot from stock Android. Like stock Android is pretty, pretty simple. You don't, not a whole lot of frills. It just, it works and it's clean and there is, isn't much in the way. Then there's like Samsung who has their TouchWiz UI that's you know a little heavy at times, but lately it's been much lighter and more like a standard Android experience. Then you get to what's on the Honor 8, and it is a different experience. I mean, there was no app drawer. It was like the iPhone. You just had pages of apps and you had to organize them. I definitely didn't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like that on the iPhone, and I definitely didn't like that on my Android experience. Um, and so what I did was actually just install the Google Launcher on this phone. And once I installed the Google Launcher, it was probably one of the best Android phones that I've had in a long time. I got that Android UI, that Android experience that I am used to by putting the Google Launcher on here. And I also had all of the nice things about the Honor 8 that were running in the background, such as the memory management and the way that it is able to clear out everything so that it doesn't have stuff running in the background. I'm actually able to tell it not to let an app run in the background, which on most other Android phones you can't do. You have to force shut down the app and it'll probably spin itself back up somehow and start eating your battery. Like Facebook and certain apps like that, if my phone is, is technically in rest mode, I have the screen off, I can tell it not to let apps to run in the background. And if I shut down pretty much all the apps, except for maybe apps like text messaging, phone calls, navigation, stuff like that, um, that are typically pretty low uh, resource, and you know they don't use a whole lot of resources in the first place, um, I, I was able to get a day and a half, two days of use out of this phone. I would use this phone all day, not charge it at night, and it would be on all night. I mean, the screen wasn't on, but the phone was, was in rest or sleep mode. Um, and it would be, you know, at 40% the next morning. 
I can't get that with an iPhone. I can't get that with the Galaxy Note 7 and its big battery. Like, I just can't get that. This phone is just a great phone. Now, um, I do I do wish that there were more cases available for this phone. I'm, I'm a case guy. I like having a case on my phone. I like having a little bit more to hold on to, and these phones are getting so tiny these days. Um, and the buttons, you know, are, are a little too easy to push sometimes without a case on them. But this phone is just great. I mean, if, if anybody out there is thinking like, I want to try Android, I don't want to spend 800 bucks on a phone or whatever. I mean, this phone is fantastic and I've got nothing really bad to say about this phone. Um, I mean, it, it didn't bog on me hardly at all. A lot of phones do. I mean, it has four gigabytes of RAM in it, so it's plenty of memory for most use cases. It doesn't have the typical processor. Huawei has their own processor in it, but it's extremely powerful and I didn't run into any issues that would, that would lead me to believe that it wasn't strong enough in the processor area. Um, and then just the memory management on this phone is just next level. I mean, most phones you have to install something to manage memory. This phone just does it on its own and it does a great job at it and you're gonna get extended battery life because of it. Um, I just, the only thing that's a little bit confusing to me about this phone that I'll probably never get used to is the fact that the lock button is below the volume button. If they would just flip those, my life would be so much easier. I'm always hitting the volume button instead of locking the phone. Other than that, this phone is fantastic. The cameras perform well, even the, even the front facing camera, uh, though it, it was a little bit soft in uh, most situations, was still a great camera. I just have really nothing bad to say about this phone. You know, if, if somebody was switching over from an iPhone 7 or iPhone 7 Plus, you might notice a little bit of performance uh, differences between the phone because this phone isn't quite as powerful as a flagship. If you're, you know, trying to decide, do I get this phone or like a Galaxy Note 7 or a Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge, those phones are gonna be a little bit more powerful than this phone. But in the money that you're spending, you are getting not much for buying one of those phones versus what you get out of this phone. Now, even Huawei themselves have flagship phones that are on a different level as far as price goes than this phone, but this phone has to be one of the best phones produced in 2016. This phone is just fantastic and it's gonna sing right into 2017 as far as its performance, its specs, just the quality of everything on this phone. I can't say enough good things about this phone. Now, I was able to also put an SD card on the side of it to expand my, uh, my memory. This phone comes in 32 and 64 gigabyte models, and it comes in a couple different colors as well. Um, and then, of course, there are some colors that are only specific to the higher-end versions of the phone. So make sure to check out the links in the description below so that you can see some of those options. The Honor 8 is fantastic. If, if you are an iPhone user and you're thinking about checking out Android, but you're just not sure about the whole Android experience, this is really close to an iPhone experience. It just has all of those good things that Android has, and then it also has some awesome things that Huawei has added in. And if you don't like the UI, if you can't handle the UI because you're more of an Android purist, install a launcher. Get the Google Now launcher. Get Action Launcher 3 or Nova Launcher. Any of those launchers are going to kind of change the way that the phone operates and the UI of the phone and your overall experience of the phone and make it more along the lines of what you're used to. And for me, I had to do that. I couldn't go with the launcher that the phone came with, but I could definitely go with the Google Now launcher as well as using the, um, the overall software experience that Huawei has put into the Honor 8. So as a phone that is below $400 and sometimes even lower than that, depending on what you're looking at, uh, and, and only $50 more if you want the 64 gig version, this phone's amazing. I can't say enough good things about this phone. And, you know, people have complained about it. I don't think that they gave this phone enough of a chance. I think that they didn't spend enough time with this phone because it's not a flagship phone and they're afraid that their video is not going to get enough views or something like that, I have nothing bad to say about this phone. And if I didn't have other phones that were, you know, more flagshipy, I probably would just hang on to this phone and make it my daily driver. However, I have other things and other plans for my other phones. And because of that, this phone will not become my flagship, but it definitely is a phone that I love playing with 
and then I'm going to keep around for those reasons, the dual camera, all that good stuff. There's no need to go and spend double the money almost on some other phone so that you can get dual cameras when you can get it right here for half the price and basically about the same performance. Huawei's Honor 8, fantastic phone, even more fantastic price. If you're interested, check it out in the, uh, the link is in the description below and make sure to subscribe to our channel here on State of Tech because we talk about phones like this. We talk about uh, tips and tricks for iPhone, Android users, all that good stuff. If you want to be notified when we have new videos come out, make sure to click on that subscribe button and you'll get notified when we put up new videos. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it helped. And if you have any thoughts on it, leave them in the comment section below. We'll see you next time here on State of Tech. Thanks.